Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday, although we're filming this on a Monday. I want to clear up some confusion because Monday Mystery released today and everybody thought I was back from my vacation. I'm not back. As you can see, I'm not back. I'm still on vacation. But just so you guys know, most of the Monday Mystery videos are not filmed on Monday because they're usually filmed many days before because it takes me a long time to edit. So, so just FYI, most of the Monday mysteries are pre-recorded. Um, and I did make an effort to get that one out there for you guys so that it would, you would have it for this Monday while I was away. Speaking of being away, as you can see, obviously I am not in my normal place because I'm at the beach house in Florida. Um, I'm actually filming from the bed. My laptop is propped up on a pillow. So if you see my laptop moving, that's why my light is over here. So it's not perfectly in front of me like it normally is. And as I was telling Stephanie beforehand, just before any comments are mentioned at 39 years old, this is the very first time I have ever filmed from a bed. So, so take, take that for what it is, but I am literally on the bed right now. First time I've ever filmed from a bed. So, all right. So how are you doing, Stephanie? I'm great. You know, it's been a really busy couple of weeks, so I'm hanging in there and uh, I got some help to help me out with my emails. So I feel great about that. And uh, so if anybody's emailed me, they're going to get an email back soon. Um, but otherwise, I'm doing wonderful. And um, yeah, that's amazing. Well, you look, you look like you're cold and I'm here in the 80 degree sunshine. It was hot couple days ago and then yesterday we had this weird freak show of hail and then it flurried and then it got warm again and then it flurried again and it was drizzling and it was like okay like what are we doing here like I don't know what's going on um but apparently um according to some people I've been talking to around uh, the United States um our friend Judy up over in Oregon um they got hail too. And then, uh, Ava, our friend Ava, um, today is snowed in Pennsylvania and also hailed. So I chalk it up to battle in the heavens. Meanwhile, down here in Florida, I was swimming in the ocean today. I think I got some. Okay. Some That's where we're going to end that. Okay. Cause I'm a little jealous. <laughs> <laughs> the best Keep rubbing thing. it in. It's Salt to the wound. Who, who ever thought that Florida would be the MPV, most valuable player in the world, basically? Um, thank you, Governor DeSantis, Mr. DeSantis to me. Um, <laughs> yes, because here, Floridians are like, ah, it's over. Like, none of this. Yeah. So, actually, I was at the grocery store yesterday. I had to run in and get Robbie some emergency food. And the uh, lady, uh, it was a Win Dixie, which is a grocery store chain, um, which we don't have in Atlanta. So, um, other places in Georgia, yes, but not Atlanta, you know, they have those discount cards and stuff. <laughs> and, uh, I was checking out the lady was like, do you have your card? And I was like, no, 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 it's, it's fine. And she goes, you know what? I'm going to scan one in for you anyway, because with Mr. B, of course she said his full name with Mr. B as president, you're going to need to save these nickels. And I was like, I love Florida. <laughs> I just love Florida. That's hysterical. <laughs> I, I called for oil a couple of weeks ago and I, and it went up again. And I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? And she goes, honey, I know, I know. We need to get this clown out of the White House. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm hearing that in Connecticut. And then I went to the farm the other day because I get my, um, I get my soap from the farm. I get my laundry detergent from the farm, and I get a couple other things. And um, my son and you know th they still eat meat, so I, I still get meat from the farm, but I don't eat it. But um. The, the cashier who owns the farm, she uh, she's always, always like complaining about him. And I'm like, all right, I see where this is going. Connecticut's going to the red side now. I'm liking it. You can't tell the people. You have to show them. Show them. Which our, the military back channel did say that. And that is true. That goes with free will. You know, you can't just come in and flip everything. If, if the white hats did that, then they would be just as bad as the black hats because it has to be free will, a collective consciousness. And so they're showing people, they're showing them. And so just let the tower moment keep crumbling because, you know, we've got to show people <laughs> what the truth is, uh, yeah. the illusion. So speaking of truths beyond the illusion, uh, Today, when we're filming, obviously, this is going to be released on Wednesday. I released my mystery Monday over Mel's Hole. And um, a lot of people 
or asking me to ask you, which of course I was going to anyway. And so that's going to be the first thing that we're going to ask the cards about. Now, for those who missed the mystery Monday, I will include a link to it down in the description box below so you can watch the full episode, but just a brief overview. So Stephanie has an idea of what we're talking about. Mel's hole is allegedly a hole in Washington state. That's like a bottomless pit. Now the, the native Americans in the area said that that this hole was known about for many generations. And there was a man named red elk who did an interview that talked about how, um, basically there's lizard people at the bottom of the hole that want to enslave humanity. There was mystical, uh, paranormal phenomenon around this hole. Somebody claimed that they had a dog that had passed away and they threw the dog, the body of the dog in the hole and the dog came back out alive again. All right. So there's mystical p paranoia around this hole. Now why it's called Mel's hole. Here's where the story gets really interesting is because back in 1997, a man who called himself Mel called into coast to coast AM with Art Bell, which as I said, in Monday mystery, for those who don't know what that radio show was, it was like one of the original alternative media platforms where they spoke about paranormal stuff. And he owned the property with this hole. And so he called in and that's when this hole became known globally because he started talking about it. He had tried to measure the hole by using fishing wire and weights. And he got like 80,000 feet down, which makes it the, the biggest hole in the world that this is true. Well, after he appeared on Art Bell's show, the United States government got involved. Now this was not his real name because no Mel Waters, I think he says was his last name. No Mel Waters is registered in this town in Washington as with tax records or owning property. So obviously he used a fake name. But when the United States government stepped in, the story goes from how, as I understand it, they leased the land from Mel and basically sent him to Australia. He ended up coming back to America where uh, the story goes, he got into a confrontation with a government official and he ended up in San Francisco with two weeks of memory gone. All right. And now subsequently people can't find the hole anymore. No one can find it. So mm -hmm. my first question for the cards, it does this hole exist? Okay. And as she's pulling, I'm going to tell you guys, as I said in the uh, Monday mystery, a lot of the geologists that work from the state will tell you it's not possible for this hole to exist because of the measurements people were giving and they said the earth would fall in on itself. But, you know, we know those government officials, they're just a bunch of, uh, you know, hocus pocus fairy tales. So we're not going to pay attention to what the government says. And I literally just pulled the ace of pentacles with it, which is earth earthbound, right? Um, yes, it's earthbound. I'm actually getting a lot of pentacles in the reading too. So like for instance, page of pentacles. Um, yeah, they've been working on, uh, getting the word out of, they've been working, somebody's been working on actually exposing this hole for a while now. I actually feel like it's going like, we're going to hear a lot more about it going forward because that's, that's a, a victory. Um, interesting. Okay. I feel like they've been suppressing just how magical the hole is. So I feel like it's got actually, a, there's something good about it. That's what I kind of gathered too, just intuitively. There's good and bad. So is the hole a portal? We'll just ask that. Is that's that kind of where I'm going with this? This whole portal. And while she's pulling, guys, this is something that I've been kind of playing with in my mind as well. And I, I don't know the answer to this because we don't know what our planet actually looks like. We don't know, you know, anything really about what our planet looks like. And so I think we have this idea that extraterrestrials off worlders live on like another galaxy and another planet. And that could be true. But there's also a theory that they actually live here with us and they're interdimensional. So they just live on like Pallades would just be on a different dimension or um, Orion is on a different dimension. I don't know. But with stuff like this, where you've got stories of lizard people, but also healing stories like with the dog, is it just a portal to different dimensions? The moon with the chariot. I would say that's portal type cards because that's movement and travel and that's discreteness. That's something covered up. 
and it brings it to different worlds. Literally, I'm reading that as like the world card as in, but different worlds. So let's say you want to go on vacation to the Pleiades, go to Mel's Hole. Yeah, I, I don't, I hope we don't have to jump through the, you know that like flip flop feeling you get when you like go on a roller coaster or something like that. I just hope that portals aren't like that because I hate that feeling. Um, yeah. And it's like uh, they've been working on suppressing this information, like I said in the pat in the other reading. But going forward, you know, the the bad guys have to surrender. I, I actually think that it's been used for bad originally for good, which I get with a lot of these readings that, you know, these Monday mysteries that we've been reading on, like something was twisted, kind of like the the pyramids in Egypt yeah. and all that kind of stuff. <coughs> um I'm getting a lot of wands too. So I have like the knight and the king of wands, which is fire. And kind of when I'm thinking it's about like going through a portal, it's like something with fire. It's um also spell casting too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um that could be that they've been um so obviously if we hear uh from the Native Americans that there was some Draco intervention, what we know the lizard people and that they don't, you know. If you guys want to watch, I do have Red Elk's interview on my Monday mystery where he talks all about this. We all know what enslavement, all that kind of stuff. He, we all know that. But again, yes, with the dog being healed, that's another positive aspect. So yeah. I'm assuming, so because this was like 20 years ago, well, 1997, over 20 years ago, that the government stepped in. So I'm assuming when the government stepped in, it was it was now in the hands of the elite. Yeah. Curious. And these now, three cards are definitely saying it's a portal, though. Yeah. So now has it been taken over by the good guys? I literally split the deck and got eight of wands to the six of wands, which is fast moving. So, to victory. Yeah. Yep. Ever since you got that deck, Bryce, you're like on a roll. That's with like my deck. Like, it's literally, I only brought two decks with me. I brought, um, my Monday, uh, Mystic Monday deck and this, but this is literally the one that's been like talking to me the most is this light seers deck. I'll put a link to the, that was my, that was my very first deck that I actually learned on. And it's an amazing deck to learn on. I actually recommend that one more than the Rider Waite deck to learn on. The, the pictures are really telling, um, they are pictures. They're not the old, you know, I'll put yeah. on, this is the holographic ones, guys. I'll put a link down in the description box below for this deck. If it's something you're interested in. Okay. Excuse me for my yawning. It's okay. It's one of those days. Okay. So it looks like. Yes, the white hats did take over it. I instantly get an ace. And. It's actually a struggle to. To for them to take over this. So they're bringing it back to its original state. I feel like with that seven of pentacles, that's cause that's like generosity, that card. And they ended the nefarious stuff, but there was a lot of stuff going on underneath there. So I wonder if there was, I just got a download of possible Nephilim even. Yeah. And Agartha, that's one thing yeah. we'll have. Um, and, and we've done guys, I've done a huge deep dive on to Agartha on this channel before. Um, and Agartha was one of those topics when I first started researching into it, I thought it was silly, but then when I was done, I was like, oh yeah, it totally exists. Like there's totally a universe beneath mm -hmm. us. So, um, and, and we know in Agartha, they are just like on planet earth, there are both good beings and bad beings, both. So it's, it's a lot like the realms of the third density as earth is. And, but from what I understand with Agartha, like where we go, they go too. So if we go fourth density positive. They're going to go fourth density positive as well. Cause we're kind of like siblings in that way. And um, so they've been, so it makes sense that the Draco try to use that because apparently there are Draco and Agartha as well. Allegedly from what I understand, I've never been to Agartha myself. So, um, so I don't think you have either. Right. Stephanie. Not that we know of. I mean, we never know. know. Maybe in our dream state, we've gone there, but. <laughs> so, um, all right. Well, um, I'm kind of teetering on asking about Mel because, but I think there's like a loophole here in the consent because I'm pretty sure that wasn't his real name. But can we just check on, whoa, Michael, I'm going to ask you to come in and guard the Zoom so that no nefarious beings um, 
try to interfere in our discussion right now. They're getting very desperate now. So, oh yeah, very desperate. Um, I think we should also ask and see in the comments that we, you can bleep this out if you want, but are people seeing weird signs in the past four days? That no, I have, I was texting we, you. We were, we were talking and um, I'm not going to go into what I got because it could be like Intel stuff, but um, are people starting to pick up on weird, weird signs like numbers and um, where universe is just not letting up with trying to give a message and yeah, it's I in the last that. three to four days. When I was driving down here, I got cracked up because I was seeing 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11 everywhere. And I was driving and I was in Northern Florida and I was like laughing and saying to myself, I was like, all right, guides, like, this is funny. I don't know what you're trying to tell me, but just keep being more specific. And I kid you not, I passed a passed a billboard that was like 11 hamburgers for $11. And I was like, you're fucking kidding me. And then uh, the other day uh, I found out that to rent a house here for a month is $11,000. That's a very high price, but 11,000. And then um, I picked up food the other day and it was $11 was the total. And there was a sign at the restaurant saying they were hiring for $11 an hour. Like it's, and that's a twin flame sign as well, which we know they're the reuniting of twin flames, which we yeah. know that's one thing that the dark cult does not want twin flames to physically unite together because the vibrational connection will change things. So, yeah. um, the three, 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 I've been seeing, which is Christ consciousness. It's an ascended master number. I've been seeing that I'll drive down the road and I will see that on so many dang mailboxes or um, ads or I'll see views on someone's video. That's three, three, three. Um, a lot of uh, three, 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 and then one, four, four. So one hundred forty-four thousand. The eleven, eleven is a big one. Seventeen, I've been seeing for the past year and four months. Yeah. And uh, seventeen means victory. But I looked more into it. Not only does it mean victory, it also means you're on the right soul path. Like you got to, you got all your your T's crossed and your I's dotted, like you're, yeah. you're going on the right path. So well, the 144 connects to the 1111 because the, that's both the 144,000 yeah. is the twin flames reuniting um, yeah. to bring the vibration frequency up. Yeah. So, and then uh, five, 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 I've been seeing everywhere, which I've known for a while. And when I first started studying angel numbers, the five, five, five repetition used to scare me because it meant like change, like, like tower moment was coming, but now I see it as something really good like a tower moment is coming for all of us and it's going to bring the change because you can't, you know, we've talked about this, Stephanie, you can't karmically, you can't go into the old or to the new without releasing the old and burning up the old. That's why people will, you know, people who don't deal with their shit, basically, if we look at an individual, like, like if you, if you have the propensity to like date the same type of guy, that's maybe not that nice or maybe cheats on you, all that kind of stuff, even though it's a different person, karmically you haven't worked through those issues because you keep attracting the same pattern and so that's the patterns that have to be burnt out basically in order to bring in a new a new value a new pattern and so the five five is, is welcome because that means collectively in our collective conscious there's going to have to be a total collapse in order for the new new pathway to come in and that's going to be hard for all of us i'm not even going to like pretend that the matrix crumbling is going to be easy because that's the only thing we know um, but we're going to have to all go through it together. That's why I love the Ram Dass quote. We're all just walking each other home. So, well, speaking of Christ consciousness, let's move on to the next one. Cause you sent me something this morning about the number 48 and Christ consciousness. Do you, and you said Ava sent it to you. Do you want to explain a little bit about that? I know it has to do with like the moving of prana, which we've spoken about many times. That's big in Eastern uh, philosophy. The prana is the upward rising yep. energy. The apana is downward. Pranic is the sun, the solar. So Siri Namaskar, sun salutations, the rising of prana, the heat, the, the heart, the blood. So do you want to mm -hmm. explain more about that? Well, I'll just read. I mean, I, I didn't do too much studying up on it. I just, I saw it and I was like, oh, this is interesting. So I'll just uh, briefly read this real quick. Um, Christ consciousness is uh, geometrically uh, being present around the earth since the beginning of mankind. It is one of the five levels of consciousness that human DNA can achieve. It is one level above our current one consisting of 46 plus two chromosomes, which is 48 of DNA. It has fallen down at the collapse of Atlantis 13,000 years ago. And it came back to life in the year of 1989. 
This shape is the uh, stellated uh, dodecahedron or the spirit or prana, but its energy also combine both the, sorry, these names are a little long here, uh, dodecahedron and the ikashadron, ikashadron, a powerful instrument of the unconditional love, love frequency. The stellated dodecahedron of the Christ grid holds the, the template of all the preceding uh, templates expressed in the geometric forms. It is an expression and model of the templates. The Christ grid stimulates us to evolve into conscious awareness with our open hearts and with high levels of impeccably and integrity. The Christ grid also helps us integrate and harmonize a true group unity. The Christ grid is a unified collective consciousness. Yeah. Sorry, there was a lot of very, very um, big words in that. And I'm familiar. And, and I'll say, too, I want to specify as well, because I think people are getting confused about this. So again, when we look at us human beings as a whole, we're looking at our physical body, in our earth, which is what we call property in San Sanskrit, plus our eternal soul, is, which is what we call parusha. These are two separate things living within the same entity, right? And so when we talk, when we, when we talk about fourth density, we're talking about the physical nature. For, we're in third density right now where the earth itself as, and our physical bodies are moving into fourth density positive. Once you get to fourth density, the planet either becomes fourth density negative or fourth density positive. Third density is polarized. Now, but the parusha, the physical spirit is then worked in dimensions. So it's fifth dimension, which is the consciousness. So fourth, so your body is not going to fifth dimension consciousness because it can't, it's nature. It's more, it has mortality to it. It's fourth density positive, but your consciousness, what, it, what lives inside the body and also radiates outside of the body is fifth dimension. So I hope that makes sense for you guys. I know for Westerners, that's really hard because they've tried to dumb us down with all this stuff. And then the third element is Ishvada or God, right? And so the only thing that really connects to God is your Purusha because the nature, the pro it's just your property. It's just the Shakti. It's just the expression of that, of that Purusha. So Ishvada is the Christ or the God, the source that connects through source through into your awareness. And the raw material does say that when we get to fourth density positive planet, that we will have a collective memory break, a bank, that it won't be necessary for each person to live out different experiences because we'll be able to tap into everybody else's experiences, which we're already kind of doing with what we call empathy. Some people can tap in through, through this mechanism called empathy, but it's going to be way more powerful um, in fourth density positive. So there's no need for certain lessons to play out. Some will still have to play out. There will absolutely still be karma. And I want to specify that again, because if you think you can just sit around and pick your nose and wait for the white hats to do anything, you're going to slow us down because your karma is not going anywhere. They're trying to block me again. Oh, block them out. All right. Hi. Archangel Michael, do your thing. So all the uh, warlocks and witches watching us right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's the all made it don't work i was swimming in the ocean today so um, um anyway but that's what i think about you but so everybody has their own work to go through right so you have to correct your you have to rebalance yourself karma itself we always think of karma as being something bad it's not bad it's just your work right it's cause and effect it's murphy's law and so if you again if you think you can just sit around and pick your nose and not change yourself and just wait for the white hats to do something then you're slowing us down. You got to actually fix yourself as well and work through your own stuff too. That's what you can do to help the process. I do it every day. Stephanie does it every day. I work on if my- If I can do it, anybody can. I face my stuff. When stuff comes up, I have to face it and work through it because that's how I'm raising my vibration. I can't be, the white hats can't be responsible for our vibrations. We have to be responsible for it alone. And so don't sit around. Your karma is not going anywhere. Just because we go into fourth density positive or fifth dimension Christ conscious doesn't mean your karma went anywhere. It's still there. It still has to play out. So best to go ahead and do that now. Raise your vibration. 
so we can all move forward. All Get right. yourself out of fear. That's exactly. one of the biggest ones. Get yourself out of fear. Move your body. Eat better. And we're going to do an edit. We're going to do a follow up episode with Ava too about exercise and spirituality soon. And, um, and I'm excited about that. Um, absolutely. And so uh, we all have to we all have to work on ourselves. So what do you want to ask the cards about this this post about the the number forty eight and the DNA and just uh, first ask if it's accurate. Okay. For starters, because a lot of these messages that we get in these memes are channeled. Channeling is not 100% accurate. It's just somebody's interpretation from spirit. Um, like a lot of the manuscript from Magdalene, mm -hmm. there was some stuff in that that I did not resonate with. Um, and it was channeled. So we can first ask, is this accurate? And I will say, and if you guys watch the opening to that, I, he says that. The guy who channeled the manuscript even says that. Like, take channeling with a grain of salt. Yeah. You know, because, and, and, I, and I, so you cannot, that's why Stephanie always says when she reads her cards, take what resonates. You should never take, if, if you're going to a tarot card reader that's telling you that their cards are 100% accurate and they're 100% right, they're manipulating you. They're fooling you. No card reader uh, are, for the positive, for the good guys, is ever going to tell you that everything is 100% accurate because it's all your perception as the reader. So, And as a good reader, the reader doesn't care if they're wrong. It's just a reading. I mean, I'm 100% okay with being wrong. Yeah. I mean, if someone's like, oh, that resonates with me, that under, oh, you got it correct. Like, okay, wonderful. But if, if, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. I'm, I've been wrong too many times in my life. I'm pretty used to it. So it's okay. Um, and I'm, I'm humble about it. So for the most part, yeah. um, especially when it comes to tarot readings, because again, like, I mean, I'm just reading the cards and I'm trying to just, uh, divinely get what I'm getting, um, the best I can. Um, also too, if you're reading for a collective, it's going to resonate for some people and it might not for some people. And that's perfectly okay. Um, 100% this is accurate. I get the Ace of Swords. Keep getting this card, Bryce, out of every reading I've been doing lately. Oh, my God. It won't leave me alone. Um, it's actually something that they're trying to stop. The dark one. How is that be? The, yeah. yeah. Um, they're using uh, spell castings. Uh, with words on that. I don't normally read the page of swords as a spell cast, but because it's uh, side by side with the tower, um, that tells me that they're doing something with words to get people to get distracted. There's a distraction there. The um, people that are trying, I'll keep reading and then I'll ask the next question. Um, I feel like this is going to be dealt with soon though. Sometimes this comes off as like a military card for me. Sometimes this can come off as authorities. Um, I know swords are words and thoughts, um, but this is like a take an action card. So it will be corrected, but this is absolutely correct. With yeah. That yeah. So um, we know that the Lyran group are what we believe, what we, in our research is that the Lyran group, the Lyran soul group is what carries the is house of Judah from the Bible. It's what carries the Christ consciousness. And a lot of the twin flames are from the Lyran group. They're the oldest souls in the galaxy, the soul split. And so dealing with the 48 DNA strands and they're trying to stop the rising of Christ consciousness. Are these people doing the spell casting with the 48 DNA strands trying to stop? The, are they connected to the coven that's also blocking twin flames right now? That's a good, good question. Is it the same group? I kid you not. I shit you not. As I am, two cards popped out, two of swords and the lover's card. Your Lord. Walking of the Guys, flames. The cards have been speaking, first of all, to Bryce, but that deck, I don't know, that deck is magical in your hands. But there's been a shift in channeling. The veil is being lifted. Would you agree, Bryce? Absolutely. There's a major uplifting Absolutely. of the veil. And it's it, these dark players are going to have a very, very hard time keeping their image very, very soon. Very soon. Um, let's see. <laughs> I just dropped a card. Okay. I've heard that. I heard that people appreciate when I drop cards, by the way. Apparently it's a favorite amongst the subscribers. <laughs> it's like, there she goes again. She's going down. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I got a 
tame this lion mane today. Uh, your hair is awesome. I'm going curly, guys. Well, I know I'm 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 already curly, but uh, so the winter time I I straighten my hair, and in the summertime I leave it curled and uh, let humidity do its thing, you know. Um, but I'm trying to not use any product on my hair or any heat. So, well, if I, I, I wash my hair every day, except I have not washed. I'll be honest, guys, I did not watch. I was swimming. So I like literally came back and like threw makeup on and, um, you don't judge me. I will be taking a shower before I go to bed tonight, but, <laughs> but, uh, you're good, Bryce. I can't smell you from over here. <laughs> Pulled back today because I was swimming. Um, See, this is the good thing about Zoom. You can't smell anybody. Yeah, uh, well, I think I smell okay because I did shower. You wear before. underwear and only underwear, and then maybe something like from the boobs and up, and you're good. Yeah, I mean, I shaved. I, I mean, I'm clean, but I just didn't wash my hair. It's so funny. I ever think about swimming. Uh, Guruji's wife, Ama, used to talk about Goa that way. She'd be like, "Oh, Goa, much swimming, much swimming." And so every time I was like, "Oh, much swimming, much swimming." <laughs> so, um, Guruji, you're in India, his wife, because Goa is kind of the resort town of uh, one of the resort towns of India. All right. I don't know what it is about doing shows with you, but it's just like universe is like, got to get this out. Got to get this out. This information. Um, there, I think it's all tied together. Um, they're working together. So it's like, it's almost like, yeah, but the three of cups is like the same thing. They're coming off like wolf in sheep's clothing because I got the sun card. However, I have the moon card all together. So that's wolf in sheep's clothing right there. And I get the same, the, the page of swords. So the spell casting. Yeah. And they all wore turquoise necklaces and jewelry and bracelets. So you guys use your discernment, pay attention. And I will say too, a divination, I was thinking about this as well. Like with great power comes great responsibility. Like I know that's yeah. from Spider-Man and, um, in the Bible, it says to whom much is given, much is expected. And I actually really believe in that to whom much is given, there's a responsibility. And people go, when people go to card readers, especially on their own, it's usually not because they're happy. They're usually, I mean, at least, I mean, I, I, I love card reading. I, I go to card readings all the time. And there are some times I've gone to card readings with friends where there was really no question I had. I just wanted to see. But a lot of times when I went to card readings, it was because I was at like a, a crossroads in my life and I needed clarity. And so with that comes this vulnerability with people. And so I think most people who divine with cards, at least most of the people I know personally that are friends of mine or people I've used are very well aware of that. They're oh, yeah. very well aware of the fact that the person coming to them is desperate. And mm -hmm. so they take that into consideration. And that's when they'll remind you, like, don't that, you know, you have the power to do this. This is just what I'm getting. This is, you know, you can do this. It's, it's very, it's a very malevolent, bad person that takes that vulnerability and manipulates it. And that's where cults, CULTs emerge from that kind of behavior. And I'm going to be doing a video on cults, by the way, for those who do follow my channel. Oh, look at this. I got this little, it looks good. Whoop -de -doo. I'm like alfalfa. Um, <laughs> <laughs> think about, I mean, us collectively, we're all in a you know, very desperate right now. We're yeah. all in a very bad situation. And so when you're watching divination, any type of di diviner, uh, whether they're using numbers or whether they're using cards or whether they claim to be communicating with off-worlders. And the one use, don't, doesn't matter what it is. Don't give them your power. Understand that they are human beings just like you. And channeling is not spirituality. It's, it's channeling. It's a spiritual gift, but it's not spirituality. And a good channeler will tell you that, like, you need to go work on yourself. Yeah. You, you, the answers lie within you. I'm just showing you what universe is telling me, but you are the holder of that power. So if you find yourself giving your power, your discernment, your power over to someone on YouTube, doing whatever with numbers or cards or whatever, you need to step back and question that because they're doing it on purpose. And about 90% of the truthers are working for the black cats. Okay. It's and for my true. personal readings too. Um, and Bryce knows this personally, cause I, how many times have I read cards on you? Um, and, and people can attest to this who have done readings with me. I'm very nice to the people I read for, but I am also very tough love. So if I see something that, 
I know probably universe is trying to correct like with a certain like if you're putting yourself down the whole time you're in you're on the zoom with me I will catch you and tell you what are you doing wrong why are you saying that about yourself yeah so I'm like I'm, I'm, I'm a therapist without being a therapist I was always told I was going to be some sort of therapist too. So go figure. Never imagined, especially in my Christian background, my roots, I'd be doing it with tarot. But um, you have powers. I, the I, mean, I don't candy off. coat things. I just don't candy coat things. I tell it how it is. But I mean, I respectfully, I'm not going to sit there and put you down or anything. But I'm going to call you out on if you are negatively spellcasting yourself. Yeah. Well, I do that. You know, Stephanie, I've been working. I'm, I'm tough on my students. I have to be, that's my job is to call out blind spots as a, as a teacher. I'm tough on my library group that I have that we're, we're all about, you know, learning about spirituality right now. And I've been very, very tough on them because, you know, the thing is a good leader is not your friend first. Mm -mm. They're your no. leader. No. Yeah. Um, I mean, these, these are people I would consider my good friends at this point, my soul family, you know what I mean? And, uh, and you know who they are, Bryce. Um, but if, if I've, find that there's something that is going on that I'm like, no, this is not right. I'm going to call it out because that's just who I am. Um, and plus, you know, part of, I know for being a leader, I have to do what I have to do too. I'm going to be very loving about it, but, um, but yeah, when I do my readings, you know, if you're sitting there with me and you, you, you're not, I can tell when people don't want to work on themselves and I will call you out on it. Uh, again, I'm very, very nice about it. And again, I always will reiterate to people I do readings on, please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. You don't have to agree with me on anything. Yeah. You could leave yeah. the entire reading and say, well, that's a bunch of bullshit. Okay, that's fine. And I will say too, like when it comes to Christ consciousness, and I've noticed this as well, Stephanie, we've talked about this a lot. Now, one day I will tell you guys everything that's happened to me with this, these death spells cast on me. It's coming from the same group. Um, there's been a lot of physical blood. Um, there was one night I thought I was literally go going to lose my life. Um, I've gotten to the point where I can't be alone a lot because of the attacks. Uh, I, I have to have people around me at all time. Um, and it's physical. It's, it's absolutely physical. It is coming from a force outside of my body. People around me see it too. Um, this is summoning and you're filming with Cindy tomorrow, Stephanie. Um, and she talks about this when you have a demon, following you an actual demon that demon had to be summoned demons aren't just skipping around the earth looking for people to like fuck with that's not what they do they're more arrogant than that they have to be given a job and a purpose and summoned by someone who sold their soul to the dark side right it comes at a price when you are dealing with your own shit nine times out of ten it's not spiritual it's not a d it's not spiritual in the sense that it's a demon or an entity it's your own shit okay mm -hmm. So I've seen that a lot of people like blaming issues on paranormal phenomenon. It comes from the church too. Let's keep that in mind. The church will tell you, oh, well, you must have a demon attached or you must have a demon in you and, and everything's demonic, demonic, demonic. No, no, it, it's your own crap. Yeah. And the, uh, the, uh, a person who is very spiritually aligned will recognize that take ownership of it, take accountability for it and say, what can I learn from this situation and then grow from it and release it. Yes. That's the way it's supposed to work. So this is the perfect time right now. And I've been getting this a lot in my readings. I've been getting a lot of this intuitively. This is the perfect time to get rid, rid and release that karma and really deal with your crap right now. Because when the time comes and you have to be on the go helping others, do you really want to deal with your own shit while you're helping other people out in the streets exactly. crying? And when you have, I'm telling you guys, when there is a demon that's following you, it's come from a coven that spell that's summoned that demon. So it's not, it didn't just find you and decided to like, no, and it physically attacks you. It's not forcing you to do anything. It's not like possessing you. It is physically attacking you there. I mean, blood, I can't even, Stephanie knows the extent of everything. Yeah, I've gone it's through. bad guys. It's, it's most, beautiful. most attacks are not demonic. No, most people, what you're dealing with is your own shit. And if, if yeah. you keep putting, if you keep, and what, what we call that is projection. When you don't want to deal with your own shit, you project it. You project it onto somebody else with the, oh, there's a demon. And you know what happens if you don't deal with your own shit? You and keep projecting. It keeps coming back, your own yeah. issues. And well, so also, too, you're going to be in this 
you're going to be in a karmic cycle over. Okay, for instance, I'm, I'm going to bring myself up into this, okay? And I, I'm an open book, so I don't care talking about myself. I'm not perfect. I've been through hell on earth back again. I couldn't tell you how many times in this, this particular lifetime. I don't know about my others, but I was dating my son's father, extremely narcissistic, abusive, physically, mentally, emotionally, the likes, okay? And I left him. And because I was so desperate to find love and just feel loved, I went on to the next best thing that I found. Well, guess what? Not too far off from what I had just dealt with. Because guess what? I did not deal with that karmic. I did not release the karma from that relationship. I didn't deal with myself. I didn't learn from myself. I didn't come face to face with myself. I didn't take accountability for sitting there and actually uh, being in a relationship with this, this man. So it continued on. And then I went to the next narcissist after that. And then the next, I probably five or six narcissist guys. Yeah. And by the time that I had ended all these things, I sat there with my head in between my legs crying to the point of puking because I hated myself so much. And to the point where I probably wanted, I, I contemplated, I never attempted, but I contemplated leaving the planet. The only thing that really kept me here was my son and the fact that I was fearful of going to hell because of the church. But this was the cycle that I kept going round and round and round because I was not dealing with myself. And then one day I said, nope, done. And I worked on myself. I did what I had to do. I started eating healthier. I started to work out more. Um, heck, I went and got my nails painted and took care of myself and started to love myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then finally, I ended up in a, a, a much healthier relationship. Now, due to the situation that we're in right now with this major divide, you know, young souls and old souls and everything, you know, um, I, I mentioned this with Mark Atwood and I, like I said, I'm, I'm an open book and I do not care that people know this at this point, but, um, you know, I married this particular person and it's, it's, it's now separating, but it had to, because that contract is now done. And I understand why I'm not going to go into why Bryce, you know why, but here's the weird part. We're still best friends and we still get along and Bryce knows this. And we still live under the same roof at the moment, but we're, we have deep conversations. We get along, we're best friends still, but we understand and have an understanding that we're both just going separate ways because we're two different people now. And, uh, you know, he knows, um, he, he's not exactly in agreement with the route I've decided to take in my life, but he understands I have to do this. And I understand he has to go his own way. And how healthy is that to be able yeah. to, I, I, I was the same way I dated one nurses after the other. And it, it, it ended up with me almost losing my life one night when I got, I had to call 911. And then that put me into trauma therapy, which actually really helped me deal with myself because I was the one that was attracting that. And after I went through that period of healing, it's when I started dating people that actually showed me what it was like to be loved, you know, and, um, and that was so healing and you can have a relationship that ends romantically and still be really good friends with that person yeah. and still, and that shows health. It's help I me. Mean, I yeah. understand not doing that too, but, um, you know, there's, that's a healthy mm -hmm. self-worth because you're not dependent upon that person to give you value. You give yourself yeah. value. I could live, I could be by myself for the rest of my life. And I still have a sense of self, Same. you know, and, and, that, and that came from actually working on myself and not depending yeah. on a man to validate that for me. Um, I was so afraid to be alone. Yeah. And I'm sure you were. And now at this point, I'm like, I like my independent time. Like, you know, my alone time is very, very valued at this point. And yeah, of course I want that, you know, connection and everything and to feel loved and everything, but it doesn't, ex it doesn't shape who I am and how I feel about myself. And in order to go into a relationship that's stable and that is um, with not, not somebody who's a karmic, but a soulmate or a especially a twin flame. If you're on a twin flame journey, which Listen, if, if you're on a twin flame journey with, both you better stick your shit on, together. On a twin flame journey, you can't, your twin mirrors you completely. It's yeah. soul. And so if you haven't worked on yourselves, either one of you, you come together, it's going to be a disaster because yeah. you can reflect on each other. And as you were saying that though, um, I got the seven of pentacles with the uh, six of wands, so that working you on, on yourself, yourself you're going to have victory. There's no problem you can't solve. And it's all about you. And, and I noticed for me with my, my students, like when they're dealing with their shit, whether it's abandonment issues, shame, guilt, fear, jealousy, it all boils down to, if you keep saying why, why, and you keep laying it down, it always comes to, it always comes down to the fact that people don't feel like they're enough. 
And so that's where you have to start is I'm enough. Even with your karma, you're enough. And when you all of a sudden realize that, that you are enough. I mean, I've been doing that. I was telling Liz and Catherine an episode, uh, cause I have a study, I have um, struggled in my life with a body morphic disorder um, story for a different day. I know people make fun of me for that, but I, I, I really did struggle with that for a very long time. And um, I'm better now. Actually, I feel like I like, I feel like I look better at 39 than I did at 29 to be honest with you guys. But for the last year or so, every morning I look in the mirror and I, I give myself a compliment. Like, you know what? You're pushing 40 years old and you have a six pack. Now, granted, <laughs> I worked for that six pack. Exercise my ass off every day. And, and we can get into that with the exercise video. But, and I, and I, I, you know, I'm like, you know what? I'm pushing 40 and I look better than 25 year olds. You know, I, I tell myself these things now and it's, it helps so much because when you walk out into the world, you walk out with confidence. And I think uh, I heard a therapist say this once when talking about narcissists, a healthy minded person will understand that they're a special little flower, but they also know that everybody else is also a special little flower. A narcissist thinks they're the only special little flower, mm -hmm. right? So just because you you're giving yourself that love doesn't mean that you're turning into something you're not you're. And the more you love yourself, the more you recognize the beauty in other people too. Right. The more you can help other people too. You can't help somebody. You can't love somebody to the fullest capacity before you love yourself. You have to take care of you. You have to nourish yourself with, um, you know, the way you feel about yourself, um, food, fitness, uh, and don't make excuses. Just do it. Yeah. I, I, the thing I do not tolerate in my readings is excuses. I will, again, I, I said, no, no, you're not, you're not going to talk like that here. You're going to talk positively about yourself here. Yeah. So I feel like almost like a personal trainer and in, in positive spell casting, you know, to some degree when I do my readings too, because a lot of my readings, you know, if you haven't had one with me, a lot of it is also conversa uh, conversation, just talking about certain things. Um, and a lot of times I will get, but I'm to this, I'm to that. I'm like, and what I'll sit there and go, so what did you do wrong? And they'll say, oh, I just said I'm this. I'm like, so what are we going to say now, now to ourselves? I'm this. Well, there you I go. Well, say too, if the person was like, well, I'm to this or I'm to that, I'd be like, why? Like we see a lot, I see a lot with women, especially who fear abandonment or don't want to be alone. They become too needy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why are you needy? Why do you feel the need to constantly be texting your boyfriend or constantly mm -hmm. what's going on? Because it might be that you are picking up that he's cheating, but nine times out of 10, it's usually your own issue. So let's yeah. look at that. Why? When I had that problem, it was stemming from my childhood. Yeah. Why? Why do you not feel like you're enough? Why do you feel like he's like somehow forgotten about you? Why? Why are you thinking this? Why? Why are you behaving in this pattern? Because it's going to push him away. So you need, so I would say to people, why? So you say you're too needy. Well, why? Let's look at that. Why? And again, it boils down to usually people not feeling like they're enough. Mm -hmm. And if you are working out, like uh, you have been having work out, you know, opening uh, those um, areas of the body. What do you call them? The bayous of the right, body right. that there, there's all that energy that being see I'm, re I'm remembering all this shit it's, it's not happening. That's a bayou like in New Orleans down there now. I know I think it's a bayou <laughs> the bayou <laughs> um, the chakras just, like, oh New Orleans the bayou no it's a bayou yeah. Yeah. it's a pathway of energy yeah yeah so when you're opening that up you can actually get rid of that energy and then you can move on with your day yeah. in life and that's what's happening with me I, you know what it's like it's not fun in the process but you feel like a freaking million bucks after you do it so you just value do it. yourself no excuses just do it you value yourself i would never yeah. have a relationship with a man that would not allow me would make me feel guilty about the time i take to work on myself every day mm -hmm. never would be it because that is spirit it's spiritual for me yeah. exercise is spiritual for me and um and it, and it and the more you work on yourself the more that self-value you have yeah you know so so yeah so and we'll, we're gonna get deeper into this with ava on another episode so yes, guys, work on your karma, journal, write, find the places and recommending people to do that. The, find the places in your life where there's like a little bit of a hiccup, like these little issues that we all have them doesn't mean they're going to go away overnight, but start to look at them, start to dig deep, deep. Why, why, why do I do this? Why do I have this pattern? We got to change the pattern. All right. Last question for today. We're coming up on Taurus season. Yep. Well, let's see what the bowl. 
let's see uh, what universe, what spirit, what God wants to tell if, us about Taurus. If you're, if you're okay with it, I'm going to pull a couple cards. But what I would like to do is I got this phenomenal deck of Oracle cards. And I'd really like to pull from this. I'm being led to. Yeah, it's go ahead. This deck right here. How beautiful is that? That's gorgeous. Let's do it. Um, I'm actually pull there's two. something magical about this deck. Um, and when I post this video, I will actually link it. Um, called Earth Warriors by Alana Fairchild, which she does like the Isis deck and the Kali deck and everything like that. So I'm going to pull from that first and then I'll do my tarot. All right. Um, what do we need to know? And guys, take what resonates with this. I'm going to pull as well for Taurus from my uh, Light Seers deck because that seems to be the deck that is very at attached to me. So. Yeah. Definitely, like you're like a crazy channeling with that deck. It's weird. I pulled for you today, and I sent you a picture, and you're like, "Oh shit!" That was wild. That was why it like whoa. Ooh, these cards are not exactly easy to <laughs> shuffle. Okay, that's interesting. Thank you. And what do we need to know? You can go first, Bryce, if you finish. Well, okay, I'm still, it looks like, oh, shit. Okay. Wow, okay. You're going to, you're going to shit your pants when I. All right. Well, I don't exactly have a diaper on, so try to make it a little bit. <laughs> and girls don't do that. We don't. Poop. <laughs> Girls don't poop. <laughs> don't do that. Hey, don't do that. All right. Well, I'm just going to tell you the bottom of the deck is the Ten of Pentacles, which is family legacy, which can mean like coming together. Um, but okay, you ready for this? I kid you not. It's telling me a story. So I think this is kind of where we are now. So the Four of Pentacles is like we're holding on to something, right? So stubbornness, but it, it's coming with the Eight of Swords. So I feel like this is the bad guys. You got that too. The bad guys are like holding on for dear life to keep us. You see how that girl's like tied up with all the uh, crows around her or ravens or whatever those are around her. All right. But then quickly coming in the eight of wands to the two of wands, which we're looking, this girl's looking outside, thinking about the future, right? She's looking out of her bedroom and the eight of wands. So the, the, what we're thinking about, what we're wanting for the future is coming fast. To the lover's card, to the empress card. And you see the empress card here. She's pregnant, right? With the new, it looks like a new earth, right? So this could be individual uh, coming together with your twin to make a baby. Or this could be the coming together of twins to, to um, raise the vibration, which we know the coming together of twins is what these people did not want to happen and what they're working really hard not to happen, right? Okay, so after that happens, there's gonna be a celebration, the three of cups, which is a celebration card. So those girls are celebrating together to the ace of cups, which is an earthbound offering to justice. Ace of cups. Ace, oh no, ace of pentacles, sorry. Oh. Pentacles. So, and this could be, so this earthbound, but it's also pentacles. So it could be, the redistribution of money. Um, That's what I was getting from that, yeah. To a, a new, and it's coming into justice where justice will be served. So, I mean, I'm assuming that's what they were wanting for Taurus, but that's the spread I got. Maybe it's just spirit saying, hey, it's okay. It's all cool. Um, everything's going to be good. So, I mean, all righty. Right. So, we're kind of in this. I, I was getting your fourth pentacles kind of matching up with my hangman card. And it's also like, Things we're hanging on to, old emotions, old uh, uh, programming, old um, uh, karma we're holding on to. And this just needs to be released. We just need to release it. We need to walk away from it. Um, this nine of cups is um, something's going to happen that we maybe been waiting for, wishing for, because that's what this card is. Um, this is a, a good card. This is a happy card. And then it looks like... Um, I feel like there's going to be a lot of unity occurring maybe in this Taurus season, because it, as you can see, they're kind of in the field. They're like working together um, as one unit type of a thing. And then we have this four of wands, which is like a marriage card. It's a celebration card. It's also a twin flame card. Four of that too. So they that could go with your lover's yeah. card. Sorry, my 
uh, phone started to vibrate right next to the phone. I mean, next to the computer there. Um, and uh, we get the sun card. So this could be talking about going into the light, darkness to light. Um, this could be ascension. This could be um, light codes coming in. This could be uh, a solar flash from the, the central sun, which is also supposed to help shift the planet as well. This could be also solar flashes from a regular sun. Um, this could be the lifting of the veil. That's what, that's what the word guru means. Darkness to light. Interesting. So watch for people who say they don't believe in gurus. Guru means darkness to light. Interesting. I'm going to read... These cards are very interesting, um, these oracle cards. And then I got two of them. And it's it's just a quick little blurb for each one. So I'm just going to find them here really quick. Um, so this is called the Hi-Aka card, the Sorceress of Light. So look at, look at the colors on these cards. I mean, this... These cards are just brilliant. And this card, <clears throat> it says, No enemy shall defeat you, nor by night, nor by day, not upon the earth, nor in the soul. You are divinely protected and empowered. You shall fulfill your destiny with joy in your heart and laughter in your belly. Play, be in nature. Feel the freedom of happiness within you. Even in this moment, these are your sacred powers. And with them, you shall take every step upon your journey successfully and nothing shall thwart your divine destiny, which is what they're trying to do is stop all that. So that was very fitting. Um, the other card I got is Shakana. Time to cross the threshold. How freaking weird is that? And again, you guys can see these cards are just absolutely stunning. I'm, I'm a girl of color. I mean, come on, look at my personality. It's got all the colors of the rainbow. <laughs> not, not, not the twisted rainbow, the regular rainbow, okay? Um, <laughs> and if you look at, this is uh, number 19. And uh, if we're going back to the way the president should be, the return will be 19th. Um, so let me look and see what number 19 is all about. Oh, I just saw the word Magdalene in here. I'll have to go into, there is a Mary Magdalene card in here, I believe. Um, all right, time to cross, cr cross, you like that? Cross the threshold. <laughs> Sometimes I just can't talk. Please, um, cross. You know, I was like, girl, I'm the one filming from the bed, not you. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> time to cross the crotch. <laughs> um, the th <laughs> good gravy. <laughs> the threshold appears bringing, uh, an ending so complete that it is no longer possible to return to what has been. The light of the stars is your faithful guide into this new world. New world. Hmm. Um, as you trust your divine connection, deconstructed forms shall reshape themselves into relevant, helpful, and beautiful new ways of living, thriving, expressing your true self. It goes into getting rid of all those old things, right? Trust your... Trust in your strangest ideas. Whoa. I think I needed that one. <laughs> <laughs> this, maybe this is a personal card for myself. <laughs> um, take resonates, guys. Take it resonates. <laughs> um, in strangest ideas. In, in that which is different, inspired, or unconventional. Hmm. Um, this crossing is healing and furthers the activation of your di divine potential. I'm telling this deck is magical. Oh my God. I'm, I'm going to start using it in my, my readings on my channel. I mean, look at these. Those are beautiful. Look, look at that, that card right there. That's, that's roaring right there. Um, yeah, these are just gorgeous. That kind of reminds me a little bit of Isis right there. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, they're very like, um, they're all like uh, artwork from all around the world, but there's like a lot of Native American characteristics in it too. But I mean, this is just gorgeous. Um, I saw a tarot reader um, on YouTube using this and it inspired me. So anyways, it's been uh, an ama probably my favorite deck so far. But yeah, I just wanted to uh, read a couple of those and see what it said. 
which very fitting, of course. So anyway. All right, Stephanie, any party? All right. Sorry. I thought there was somebody at my door. So I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> all right. Any parting words for our audience? Oh, I will put all of her contact. If you want a reading with Stephanie, I will put all of her contact information in the description box below. Thank you. And just, um, I am having an assistant helping me right now. I'm not going to say assistant's name, um, but uh, I have somebody who has uh, helped and uh, put together a uh, online booking for me and who is going to be responding to uh, emails for me to assist that person. I love you. Mwah. You are like awesome. Totally awesome. Um, because uh, with me putting out more uh, videos, more content, um, my uh, daily work schedule has been a total shit show. But I, I want to continue to put out more content. Um, and I'm also going to be letting go of some of my groups. I have some people who are uh, volunteering themselves to take over a few of my groups to kind of lighten the workload. Although those groups, I will pop in from time to time and say hi. Um, so I'm going to only keep like about two groups going forward. Um, and I, I need to put together new groups in addition to that because they're getting a little large. But um, just bear with me, guys. Um, and always follow your intuition, your discernment, and only take with what the cards say is uh, with a grain of salt and um, only what resonates. Yeah. Very important. We love you guys. Keep smiling. Keep working on yourself. And we, I'm sure we'll all see each other on the other side. Yes. Bye, guys. Bye.